Do you know how to do it? Just go on. on. You're on? Good deal. Okay, so this is chapter 32 on uh, the Cyrenians and um, their mammals, meaning that they, uh, they're they warm-blooded, they have hair, although they've lost a lot of their hair, um, but you can still see it in places on their bodies. They give milk to their babies. They have mammary glands for feeding their babies. Let's go back through the biological classification since we have some time here. Okay. What domain are we in? Eukarya. Eukarya. What kingdom are we in? Animalia. Animalia. What phylum are we in? Vertebrata. Nope. Chordata. Chordata. Bingo. That means having a dorsal nerve cord running down the back. I like that. Now we're reading vertebrata. We're in <coughs> subphylum vertebrata. Thank you. So that means having a backbone. There are some chordates without backbones. Ten points if you can tell me a chordate that doesn't have a backbone. We already studied it in here. Uh -huh. A chordate without a backbone. It's white paper. You should know. Oh wait, I'll go get it. Yeah. Can I get another one? No, that's not considered a chordate without a backbone. But I'm not going to count on for it. I spelled it. Peach correct. Awesome. Thanks. One card to the desk. Screw it. It's broken. The screw doesn't work, so you have to balance it on the, on the I guess. I guess. It'll stay on there. Just, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he's disrupting us from getting the answer right. Can we look it up? Hmm? Why correct? Hey, boys. Orange correct. We're bringing it up. Anyone else? Yeah, we got it. On this little green piece of paper. Oh, Blue correct. With the answer, that's right. That's... An answer, right? Um. Give it to us. Okay, I'll give it to Green. Um, it's a uh, the the, the non-vertebrate chordates are the tunicates and the lancelets. Um, and then you had your vertebrate chordates, uh, which um, after domain, kingdom, phylum, what's next? Um, phylum. Is it uh, class? Class. Yeah. So one of the classes under subphylum vertebrate is class. You know what class these things are in? Mammalia. Yes, mammalia. Mammalia. Now there's other classes. There's fish classes. There's chondrichthyes. There's agnatha. There's osteichthyes. Those are all fish classes. Bony fish and cartilaginous fish and jawless fish. And then there's class amphibia, class reptile. Class Aves, which is birds, and then there's class Mammalia, which is what we're studying now. Now, under mammals, there's a whole bunch of different orders. Um, and the order that we're in now is called Sirenia. We just did, though, we did order Pinnipedia yesterday. Remember the pinnipeds? Sea lions. Sea lion, walruses. <laughs> So now we're in the Cyrenians. So these are Cyrenian sea cows. And that's sea cow. Mermaid. We call that a manatee. You can swim with those. You, you can. You can swim with the manatees. Are we going They're about big dugongs? creatures. Yes, dugong is also in this group. Notice this is a manatee. You can tell the manatee because they have the wide fluke that goes up and down, pushes it through the water. It's a single wide. Different from the dugong, the dugong tail is, is like a whale's tail. It's got two sides to it. I'll show you the dugong. There's a dugong. Well, that's actually, that's a stellar sea cow, which is related to a dugong. It's got the wider tail. And uh, that's extinct. That was the largest, the largest um, Cyrenian was stellar sea cow, this one. And it went extinct in the 1700s. Humans hunted them until they 
They're all gone. Why'd they hunt them for like meat? Meat, oil. Does it taste good? I don't know. I never tasted one. Probably, 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 probably so. It's meat. Um, so there's the dugong. There's one species of dugong. There's the manatees. There are three species of manatee. And there's the extinct stellar sea cow. That's this picture. And there's a, a bunch of fossils of other extinct versions that went extinct before humans. How big are they? They're big. Between 8 and 13 feet long. So 13 feet, did you know that these are one foot floor tiles? No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So from here to the podium. That's pretty long. Big animal, 3,300 pounds. How big was Stellar Sea Cow? 25 feet. That's from the door to about right here, probably. Big. Not as big as whales, whales, but big. Do you want to see video footage? Oh, wait, I got more of Stellar Sea Cow. There's a stellar, stellar Sea Cow. There's people hunting the Stellar Sea Cow. The bigger they are, the easier they are to catch, and that's why they went extinct first. Are the manatees and dugongs going extinct? Yes. yes. They're highly endangered. And the problem is they're real slow moving and they get hit by boats. So they're going to stand. They get that overhead tattoo on the Video footage? This serene, slow moving, and strange looking animal is a manatee. And this handsome fellow is his close relative, the Dugong. Because they eat plants. 
And plants don't grow in deep water. They need sunlight. So they're only in shallow water. So these things are right below the surface. And if you could imagine, if you go flying through there in a boat, you could hit one. They're so big that they move slow and they can't get out of the way. So they get hit by the propellers. Now normally a propeller on a small boat is not going to kill one, but it'll leave a scar. Um, a propeller on a big boat can kill one directly, but usually the way they die from a propeller strike is by infection. They get a cut and just like you, it can get infected. And they die of the infection. Is salt water good for it though? Salt water would help, but there's a lot of bacteria out there that can withstand salt water. And uh, sea animals get infections too. So um, a lot of them will die from the boat strikes. There is a, uh, they are endangered species, so you're not allowed to hunt them. Uh, they, uh, their numbers are surviving just because we protect them. Um, but uh, you know, they're still, numbers are very low, just a few thousand, like they said. They love to drink the salt, the fresh water. Uh, if you run a hose off your dock, you may have seen them come up to drink water from your hose. They can detect that fresh water from a long ways away, and they'll come up and drink from the hose. Um, I saw one on Jekyll, uh, at the Jekyll Marina, I petted one that was drinking from the hose, and it likes the feeling of you have pet them. It'll turn its belly up so you pet their belly like a dog. That's adorable. Yeah, it's pretty cute. And you can see when you're petting them, you can see all the strike down their backs. Pretty cool creatures, though. They're, they're herbivores. They all eat sea grasses. Um, they have... Uh, um, Teeth that up oh, might be a movie. Yeah, that's a moving picture. They have teeth that uh, are made to digest the plant material. Um, they don't have uh, canines and incisors like we have. They just have the side teeth, molars and premolars, and then they chew with. Um, they're made flat to make to chew up plant material. Um, slow rate of reproduction. They can live 70 years, maybe more than that. It's hard to know how long these things live. But um, they think at least 70 years they found individuals that are that old that have been tagged and marked and recognized by people. Tend to have just one or two babies at a time. And uh, long gestation periods. It takes about a year of pregnancy before they give birth. Uh, the scientific name for their body is fusiform. Can you say fusiform? Fusiform. Fusiform means angled at both ends. So if I were to draw a fusiform shape, I would draw something that's tapered like this. That's fusiform. So it comes to a point at both ends, smaller at both ends. You see a lot of things in nature shaped that way in the water to be able to get through the water easier. You want to be angled. Um, ten points, if you could tell me, is that a manatee or a dugong? Like a no. Ten points, if you could no. tell me, is that a manatee or a dugong? You should know from the video. Uh, Face down. Thank you. Green, correct. Orange, correct. Peach, correct. White, correct. Purple, correct. And blue correct. That's a dugong. How can you tell? Well, the easiest way to tell is a tail. This is called a fluked tail. Fluked. F-L-U-K-E-D. And that's what a whale's tail looks like. The manatee, it rounds off. It keeps going. It's round. 
it's wider also at the base. This is where you find dugongs. We don't have any dugongs around here. This area is called the uh, Indo-Pacific region. And that's where you find most of them, but you got some over here in Africa. On the coast of India. No dugongs here, unfortunately. Do you think if they were to place one here that it would live or die? Depending. I don't know. Of course, you'd have to have at least two, or they'd be dead by the time they got old. You know what I mean? To have kids. Six. So, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. They like the warm waters near the equator. Different from the sea lions. From the sculpted beauty of desert dunes <coughs> to the undersea realms of the Persian Gulf. United Arab Emirates is a study in contrast. And while most people associate Arabia with desert life, the region is in fact teeming with marine animals as well. Perhaps none more intriguing than the dugong. Its nickname is the sea cow, and like its namesake, it spends hours each day grazing. Dugongs ply the warm, shallow waters off the coast, feeding along seemingly endless beds of waiting seagrass. Their cylinder-shaped bodies measure more than 10 feet in length, and fully grown, they can weigh in at over 800 pounds. In the seagrass beds, they seem bulky, plastic, and content. But conservationists are worried. Some of these creatures share the coastline with the largest of the emeralds, Abu Dhabi. Over a million people live here, and that number is swelling by over 50,000 each year. New buildings sprout from the sands, and engineers drive back the sea to house the burgeoning population. Whoops, I'm sorry. It comes at a cost, not just to the buyer, but to the marine environment as well. Dredging and construction leach silt into the Gulf, which chokes corals. Worse for the dugongs, the silt smothers the seagrass, covering their food supply with a blanket of debris and pollution. Seagrass beds are dying. It's a potential threat because these so-called sea cows need to consume huge amounts of seagrass in order to survive. The underwater vegetation has a very low nutritional value. What dugongs lack in quality, they make up for in vast quantities. An adult can eat almost 70 pounds of grass in a single day. It's not only dugongs that suffer. The sea grasses also provide food and shelter for the endangered green turtle. The sea turtle, in turn, provides transportation for fish called the worms. So with the sea grass beds buried, Entire ecosystems of marine creatures feel the impact. But in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, it's the dugong population that is most in the spotlight. The species has already been listed as vulnerable to extinction. And this is part of the second largest population remaining in the world. To lose these dugongs would be a further blow to an already beleaguered species. To find out what it will take to protect the dugongs, a government organization called the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, or EAD, has been asked to investigate. The first priority is headcount. More than 2,000 dugongs spend their summers near Abu Dhabi. In the winter, the number swells to almost 3,000. When a dead dugong washes up on shore, a team of scientists moves in to examine the remains. First, they measure the body, and then take photographs. With the data collected, scientists try to determine the cause of death. Many of the animals are killed by boats. Others drown when they become entangled in fishing nets. Now that the authorities know where the dugongs are and how they're being impacted, they can continue to make plans to keep them safe. A lot of pressure came into the marine environment, the population declined. So today we have a well-established strategy for conservation of the dugong. A major part of the conservation area is a marine protected area in the region with the densest population of dugongs. 
with one of the largest sanctuaries of its kind in the Middle East. The government has also enacted laws that reduce the boat speed in some areas. It's also banned certain types of fishing nets that cause the most damage to dugongs. And in education awareness programs, sponsored by the Save Our Seas Foundation, give local children the chance to learn about the dugongs and the entire Gulf ecosystem. Abu Dhabi is working to make sure the dugong has a future, so that what happens in the sands of Arabia doesn't completely spill into its undersea realm. They found that enforcing speeding uh, penalties for boats has helped these creatures because they're slow. So if you're going slower in your boat, they can get out of the way. But if you're going faster in your boat, you hit them. And so if you have speed limits for boats in shallow waters, that really helps them. Of course, it doesn't help if you don't enforce the speed limit. So they've noticed that when they put Coast Guard type agencies out there, enforcing boat speed limits, that these things don't die as much. So those of you who are boat owners, drive slow in shallow waters. This is a funny story. Christopher Columbus, who thought mermaids were real, went to the waters around Haiti and wrote in his logbook that he had seen three mermaids. He said they were not as beautiful as everybody said they were. Nowadays, people believe Christopher Columbus had actually seen three manatees. What a guy. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Not as beautiful as they say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's manatees were thought to be. Um, mermaids. That's why they call them Sirenians, because the sirens uh, are, are mermaids in mythology. Okay. And you can see the big flute, the big round uh, tail there of the manatee. It's different than the dugong. Here's where manatees are. And... We have them here. What's the red spot? I don't know what this red spot is doing here. In our coastal areas, like rivers. Rivers and oh, marshes in here? Isn't the uh, Amazon River right there? I wonder how they yeah. got in there. Well, it does have a connection. The Amazon does come through here. And it, there are it places the where it, it overflows its, its... The river overflows itself, but I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I know about this, though, that we're like the northernmost place you'll find these things. What about in Africa, like the land area? I guess this is, uh, again, like... Inner rivers. Rivers that come out and spill off into the... Why is it near, like, Louisiana and the Gulf that's just not existing? I don't know. That's a good question. This is where the... Uh, the Mississippi River spills out, though, and where the Mississippi River spills out, there's a, there's a lot of uh, um, fertilizers and stuff that come along with it, taken from the, uh, from the farms and everything, that, and, and whenever it rains, all that fertilizer and stuff runs off into the river. Right. And where that spills out, there's this huge overgrowth of algae that die and uh, cause, uh, and when their decomposition removes oxygen from the water. So it's very, very poorly oxygenated around where, the, where that is, and that might be why there's none there. I don't know, I'm just guessing. I gotta figure out what this is. Blow up. I don't understand that, but I guess it's in rivers and marshes and stuff that are more inland. Or it could be some mistake in the map. Um, since these things eat uh, vegetable matter, they have a really big cecum, which is a pouch in their stomach that holds the plant material. And they have bacteria living in their cecum that will digest the plant material for them. And this is the same thing that horses and cows do. They eat hay, they eat grass, and they digest that plant material in their cecum. 
So they got this giant stomach pouch for digesting plant material. Monkeys have it too. You see monkeys with big stomachs. Same sort of thing. Uh, this paragraph's about their teeth. They, uh, they have no more than six teeth in each jaw, and they, they constantly replace their teeth. So they have teeth that fall out, and new ones come in from like the back. sharks? Kind of like sharks, yeah, a little bit. Only sharks' teeth are more like scales that can just fall out and are replaced. But um, they, uh, they constantly have new teeth throughout their life. Live 60, 70 years at least. Oh. More video footage. Protected by the barrier reef, vast fields of undersea grass flourish. Herds of timid beasts once grazed these prairies. A few still survive here. A manatee, one of the gentlest of all creatures. Purple, no. Anyone else? 
I got it. Put it on the team. That's that ISM on the end. Green brick. It's called commensalism. Commensalism. So there's three types of relationships. When one organism helps another, that's mutualism. Can you think of an example of mutualism? Just shout it out. Coral. Nemo. And Coral and what? Uh, algae. Or the algae that grows in them. Coral and the algae that grows in them. Very nice. They're helping one another. Moss Nemo. And trees. Clownfish and the sea anemone. What's moss that? Moss on trees. Moss and trees. How does the moss help the trees? That's what I was thinking. That's a good question. It's a parasite. Is it really? Yeah, I don't think the moss helps the trees. But if it did, if the moss did help the trees, that would be mutualism. So mutualism is when they help one another. Commensalism, one help and one not. And then parasitism, one helped and one hurt. Can you give me an example of parasitism? A leech. Tick, a human. A tick and a human. A leech and a human. Anything not human? Um, bacteria. Oh. Uh, what's that? What's that? Just animals. What's well, that? are they hurting the animals if they're in their stomach? On planet Earth, there's that fungus that like I mean, gets inside of the ants and then it grows out of their head. Tapeworm and dog. Yeah, what is it called? I don't know. Tapeworm and uh, and a what? Dog. And a dog. There's, there's a good one. That's parasitism. We're human. We're human. Yeah. We are. Or a human. Uh, or a human. We are human too. We are. I believe so. Manatees spend 50% of the day sleeping. That's kind of like y'all. Boy. Anyone sleep 12 hours? I try. Yeah. They have an, e an interesting way of sleeping. They have to go up for air every 20 minutes. They can't hold their breath as long as like a turtle can. So they need a breath every 20 minutes. So they sleep for 20 minutes. And they go out for a breath. And then they sleep for 20 minutes, and then they go out for a breath. they got to wake up every 20 minutes. That's terrible. Isn't that tough? Why don't they just swim on their backs off the surface so they breathe and swim? Or breathe and sleep at the same time? S sleep while they're swimming? Then they'll get they're heavy enough breath. to sink, so they can't just float on the Not surface. Um, breed once every two years? Oh. Only Usually only one calf is born, but they can have two. That's the baby right there. They That's have nipples out. under their flippers. Is that how big it what comes the heck? <laughs> And the baby uh, sucks milk out of the nipple. Does the it's baby the come out that big? No, the baby's smaller when it comes out. Do they only have one Gross. nipple under each fin? One nipple under each. So do they sexually Two reproduce? nipples. They like sex, people. They sexually reproduce? Yes. There's guy, male, and female. Oh, very interesting. Probably very, like, hard. Uh... It's it's penis vagina sex. I'm not exactly sure. I've never seen like footage of it. <laughs> they find a way to do it. It's probably why they mate once every two years. Because it's difficult to do. Takes so much energy. Twelve month gestation, so they have twelve months pregnancies. The the baby feeds off the mother for 12 to 18 months. So that's, an, it, at the most, about an 18-month old baby. That's pretty big. How old is your child? 18 months. And finally, there is uh, uh, the last part of the reading talks about preservation of manatees, what they're trying to do to save them. Slow down your boats. No more fishing nets. Um, the 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 TED devices that the turtles can get out of. Um, uh, things like that to help uh, at least baby manatees get out of a big fishing net. I don't know if big manatees get caught up in shrimp boat nets, but maybe they move slow enough for the manatee to get away. Um, make sure you read your section. There could be a test on it.